Hello everyone, thanks for dropping in, hope you're having a great day. Um, so here we go, messing around with um, waste oil stoves and burners and that sort of thing again. So, um, okay, so I have the scene kind of illuminated. I have a Makita, um, modified Makita radio with a, a light on top, illuminating the, the, uh, the scene if you like. So this is the, uh, the waste oil burner, uh, new design. Uh, at least, you know, I haven't seen one anywhere and uh, I'm kind of prototyping it. It seems to work really well. Uh, I tried it last night for the first time and it was a little smoky. Now, when I say the first time, not exactly because this is what I did. Okay, so uh, if you can see this, right, this was prototype number one. This is a biscuit tin um, and a dog food tin. So what I did was um, standard biscuit tin. I cut a hole in the bottom of it with a chisel, just, you know, hammered a hole through it. I uh, got it as tight a fit as I could for the biscuit tin. Uh, you can see there's holes there in the biscuit tin and obviously uh, I drilled them on purpose. So they're like eight, nine millimeters in diameter and uh, they just fit uh, directly into the thing. Now the, the, the reason for that is I want the air to come from outside of the stove into the bottom of it. So the air comes in here and only in here. So all the combustion air goes through this port. Uh, gets sucked in here by the flames because when the flames burn the oxygen obviously you know air has to come in to replace it it's rising up the flu and um, and more air comes in and and does you know keeps the combustion going but in any case uh, I tried this in a different stove and it worked great uh, that was it it just worked great so I thought okay um, I'll give it a shot so what I did was I made one out of heavier materials this was a one-time use and you know if you are messing around or want to try something this is, you could bang up one of these or make one of these in a, you know, in a few minutes, literally biscuit tin, dog food tin, a hammer and a, a drill. And you'd have this, you could try it and see if it works for you. Now, in, in the first setup, what I did was I put some um, uh, wood shavings and some waste oil into this compartment, you know, and I just closed the door on the stove and off it went and it burnt, <laughs> it burnt really, really well. You'll see now shortly. So this is the, the same stove that's kind of been in a lot of videos. Uh, I've an awful lot of views on, on some of these videos now, which is <laughs> mind-boggling. But in any case, uh, what we've got is down here, we've got the same setup as this, only made out of mild steel. The center bit, instead of it being a dog food tin, uh, to be honest, I didn't have any 3-inch pipe handy. So what I did was, this is um, like a, a cylinder propane tank off a turbo torch. I just cut the top off it and made it the size. I'm going to show this in detail now in a second. Okay, so here's the turbo torch bottle, you know, map gas. Um, anyway, so what I did was I just topped it and uh, turned it upside down. These holes are just, you know, part of the manufacturing process. They're not actually holes in the cylinder or in the tank. And I'm using maybe this much of it and I, you know, obviously just threw the rest away. And I drilled some holes. Uh, eight millimeter holes are the ones you can probably see on the top there. I'll show it in detail now. And um, so let's have a look. Okay, so um, I haven't seen one of these around. So you know, if if someone else has one, great. But this is my version of it. So uh, map gas uh, container, just a propane tank, goes through this plate. I made this. So what I did was I cut a strip about three inches wide. Um, and I welded it, so I made a ring out of it. And then I stuck, you know, I put it on a piece of plate, marked around it, cut the plate, and then welded the plate. So essentially I just made a pot, right? But um, the reason for it being mild steel was because I wanted to weld this. When I drip oil in it, I didn't want the oil going down. So I've got two rows of holes in this one. Now, this is still a work in progress. This works great. Um, last night when I fired it, it was a little smoky, so I decided to drill the holes, these holes, a little bit bigger. So these are now nine millimeters and the one underneath are seven. Now there might be a better arrangement of holes. So it, it's trial and error at the moment. But having said that, this thing works great as is. So you can really see it now. It's nothing, you know, you could, as I say, you can prototype it yourself with a dog food tin and see what you think. Okay, so that's it. Now to explain the stove bit, okay, let's see if we can do this. Okay, so. That's obviously a hole cut in the bottom of a the stove there um, and that's because I used um, in the first video way back a few years ago I, uh, I used a different type of um, 
of burner that came up through the bottom of the stove. This one is actually going to use that port as an air intake and uh, the air is going to go up through again through this thing here. Now the pipe in the back that's my eye line and it comes in with um, a half inch pipe inside it so the, um, the the one inch steel pipe on the outside is a protector of the the oil line and what happens is um, the oil comes down a half inch pipe you can see maybe you can't let's see okay I'll show this in detail as well but not to get too bogged down this is a half inch pipe with oil in it through a um, half inch gate valve and down into the system eventually it appears here okay so the setup then is remember I want the air to come in here and only in through here so I've got a bit of sand and stuff in there what I'm going to do is put this in and uh, and then just back it up with sand just to kind of seal it off so that most of the air has to be forced through these holes for combustion let's try that so that's it in okay so here we go again um, some fire starter uh, fire lighter um, my turbo torch which I would normally use for this uh, has given up the ghost so look just gonna put this in okay kerosene everybody asks me how much kerosene I'm gonna put in or diesel or whatever and you can see it's not even that clean okay so anyway there's about a quarter of a cup uh, 50 mils 50 milliliters so I'm gonna pour this in didn't even put it all in okay so there's still still a little bit left now look while the door is open obviously the smoke is going to come out because it needs needs a warm chimney to go up the chimney so here we go close this door let's see what happens now I've no control over the air Oh, something I forgot to do. To stop the flame wanting to hit the glass, this is just a lump off an old uh, cylinder. Actually, you know what? It's off the minion. So this was to be a door, or will be a door for the minion. So I'm just going to put that in as a shield to protect the glass a bit. Just to divert the flame a little bit away from the glass. The glass. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. Maybe. But you can see that the, the flame is a little bit um, a little bit more aggressive now. Now the trick is to let it get a bit warm, you know, a bit hot, before adding the oil. So I'm going to add a bit of oil now. Okay, so now I think can we? Okay, so if you look there through the, the hole in that tea piece, now that's a that's a big flow, I want less than that. Okay, so the flow is a little bit skinnier, I'll go even less than that again in a minute. Can you hear that? Okay, now you can see why I put the door of the minion in the way. It's just to divert the flame away from the glass. Because if it's if it's gonna be smoky, it will be smoky at the start. And uh, until things redden up, we don't have, um, you know, at the start it might be a bit smoky. Hopefully, if I can get the, the balance right, you now the oil has stopped. These gate valves are terrible. Um, not really what I want to be using. Okay. Right, so there we have a flow now. there you go look you can see all the air in that stove now everything coming in is coming in through those holes that I drilled in the bottom okay I'm back uh, it's been running for about 20 minutes now or so and um, you can hear the kettle boiling okay so um, yeah it's not 100% smoke free but it's uh, it, it's a long way towards it um, flame is going quite well I'm gonna open the door now and show you what happens when you open the door and maybe you can hear the bit of a the noise, the bit of a roar it's making. Um, I'm gonna try and zoom in. So you can see over here uh, in the site, this, you know, the uh, where I've drilled out the middle of the T piece. You can see the uh, the oil flow. It's quite skinny, 
quite small. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overdrive it so you can see it. Actually, before I do that, I'll just show you the, the setup now before I put too much oil in it. Right, so that's that's the flame you get out of that sort of flow rate. That's probably two to three liters an hour. So when I open this, okay, can you see that? Not really. Okay, it's smoky. There's no roar out of it, and um, but you can see the jets. Smoke wants to go up the chimney because the the, uh, the the flue is hot, but uh, you can see the air coming in to, to help with the combustion. But if I don't get that door closed fairly soon, right, let's see. Have a listen. You see, with the air being forced in, being sucked in um, from the fire for, for combustion, it, um, it, it goes an awful lot better. Now, let's have a look at the smoke situation. I'm going to up the doors. Okay, let's have a look. Now there's precious little smoke out of that, mostly heat and a uh, nice blue sky. Okay, so let's try this again. Now I'm deliberately, I'm just close this door, I'm deliberately going to. Um, going to overdrive it. In case you couldn't hear me, um, I'm deliberately, deliberately going to overdrive it now. Um, right, so let's see what happens. It doesn't take much. These gate valves are, are useless for this. Now you can see, oh. That stream's too heavy now. But anyway, look. You can hear a change in the stove. Probably takes about 10 seconds, I would say, for that oil to manifest itself in the stove and do something, but you can see the flames rising. So it just depends how much air you need out of it. Now, if you find, if, if someone does make this and uh, you're playing with it, you can add external air. You can, you can add forced air to it very easily into that bottom pipe, just a small amount. Maybe I'll play with that later and show that working out. Now look, if I leave it roaring like that, um, it's obviously gonna redden that stove, which now, <laughs> that stove has been reddened quite a few times. So I'm not worried about it one way or the other. But um, yeah, it's a really cool, um, really cool way of making um, and experimenting with waste oil. Now look, I keep saying it this in the videos, you could end up dead or kill somebody or burn your house down or something with this stuff. Be very careful. And it all started with this, you know, so if you want to experiment, all you need is a biscuit tin, a uh, sweet tin or a candy can tin, dog food tin, whatever. Get something that looks like that, stick some holes in it, feed it its air from the bottom. And uh, so that's why it needs to go into a stove like this. Now, I think I'm gonna fire this type of stove or this type of burner in that Minion stove that I did as well, just to experiment. And that might be where I go with this next. But this is very quick and, and easy to make. You could probably make it, you know, a hundred different ways or more. But uh, this is how I made it. And you can see it, I'm burning waste oil. It'll burn all day long and uh, for very little money, little to no money, to make this setup. Um, that stove doesn't need to be um, cast iron, it could easily be a propane tank. And in fact, I'm probably gonna build another propane tank um, stove for here. Um, I let the other one on. Somebody came looking for it and, and they took it away with them. But um, anyway, um, if you liked the video, uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. And thanks for watching. See you again. Bye.